Uh, so this is Dr. Baumia. Now, what's the narrative about Dr. Baumia? The narrative is simple. Dr. Baumia is uh, uh, catapulted to political fame, especially after the 2008 election was lost. Then came 2009 and then came 2010. It was, by the time he was selected in 2008, it was too short for people to sort of get a feel of him. People knew of him as Dr. Baumia at the Bank of Ghana. People knew of him. But in terms of getting a feel of him, the time was really, really short. So that was an Akufado campaign. 2008 was a campaign run on Akufado's shoulders. Fundamentally that. Nothing more, nothing less. Then the election was lost, narrowly as it were. 2009 came, then came 2008. Then came the promise of free SHS ahead of 2012. It was in the 2012 election that people began to get a feel of Dr. Baumia because then he started speaking, he started talking, he was engaging with people, doing, I, I interviewed him before, and then people started to believe that this guy, is a, he, he knows how to talk. He's a, he's, a, he's a rabbit talker. He knows how to talk. Uh, you know, he's very articulate. So people started, oh, the Baumia is not bad. Then he was focusing on the economics thing, and then he found, he created a sort of niche for himself, that he is the politician who is not a classic politician, but he has become a politician. He's focused on dealing with the economic issues. Then came 2012, he was lost. Then came the court case, where Dr. Baumia didn't speak as, a, as an economist, he spoke as a data analyst. And wow, did he not impress the people? Everybody who saw the court case was impressed that Dr. Baumia, and then the sound bites came, you and I were not there, we don't know what happened, polling station. His understanding of the electoral process, which is pure data analysis, was, was sublime. And people liked that. Okay. Then the election was won. Then he became vice president. Then they, uh, he did a speech and said, I've taken the keys of the dollar and locked it with the IGP and all that. And Dr. Baumia is a kind of propagandist. You know, he has the, he has the sound bites. He does have the sound bites. You can't, you can't take that from him. Okay. So uh, economy went through and then the second term of election came and then came COVID and then the economy went down and the economy is still down and it's in a critical situation. So people think that, oh, Dr. Baumia said he's an economist and the economy is not working. I always tell them, uh, those who say that, yeah, the economy is in crisis. Okay. Dr. Baumia inherited an economy of 3.4 from the NDC and, and its people in 2017 as economic management or economic risk scale, whatever you call it. After inheriting 3.4 uh, growth of the economy, Dr. Baumia and his team added more bill to the economy. The economy was paying more because they added teachers and nurses training allowances, uh, free SHS, uh, all, all of those things were added to the, uh, to the budget of the country, inheriting the economy at 3.4. Uh, In addition to adding, they were able to grow the economy. Having added more bill to the economy, they grew it in 2017, 18, 19, 20. So my concern has always been, if you cannot say that this team of Dr. Baumia and Ken Ofrata, Cooper, all of them, if you can't say that they were bad economic managers in 17, you didn't say that. 18, you didn't say that. It doesn't take five years to evaluate a government. Within two years, you can evaluate a government. So 18, you didn't say that. 19, you didn't say that. Don't come and say 2021, because in 2021, you cannot find a single country in the world, of the 195 countries or so, you cannot find a single country in the world whose economy will post anything positive in 2021. And I'm referring to Japan, America, China, Italy, England, and all of the a place like Italy, it's possible that Ghana's economy was showing better than them post-COVID and post-Russian Ukraine war. So we are still, the jury is still out on that and we don't know what it will, it will say. But my view of the matter is that if you have to say that these managers are bad, they didn't take a juicy economy. They didn't inherit uh, milk and honey. They inherited straw and they grew it to a certain level. They say that the international thing that happened is what has occasioned this. I am tempted to believe that because if they were bad managers, when they picked up straw, they wouldn't have turned it into growth. But that's what they did. Anyway, so this is Dr. Baumia and his narrative. Now people are saying that, look, if Dr. Baumia must win the MPP nomination and must win the national election, he has to do something dramatic about the running mates thing. It's not just a simple, uh, my, I'm from the north, my running mate is from Ashanti, I'm from the north, he's from the south, I'm short and he's tall, he's tall and I'm short, I'm fair, and I'm dark and he's fair. No, 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 no. It has to be a choice that speaks to revolution, that speaks to hope, that speaks to unity of the party, and that speaks to a certain expression of consistency with the development agenda. That's what the ticket must represent. Anything else, it doesn't work. Other people say that with Dr. Baumia, because he's Muslim, he may have to look for a ticket that represents a Christian dom. 
so that you can have a religious ticket. The jury is still out on whether or not Ghanaian youth are going to vote with religion in mind. We've seen the data analysis that I presented earlier that said that delegates did not think of religion. But we don't know whether the broader outside MPP, broader Ghanaian group will think of religion. If they will, then Dr. Baumia has a religious question to answer. Does he also have a public policy choice to make like we discussed with President Mahama? Maybe. So Dr. Baumia has a political choice to make, religion, uh, public policy as well. So now let's go through the list. Okay. Good evening, Alhaji Muhammad Baumia. You have a lot to achieve. So people are saying that, Dr. Baumia, your choice is simple. If you go to this Congress and you win, we believe that the choice, the fight is between you and Alan Chemati. You here, Alan there. Please, if you win, just take Alan as your running mate. Is there precedent for that? There is. There is precedent for that. So this is the ticket that they are calling for. That Dr. Baumia, if you win, just pick your senior brother as your running mate. That's where you unite the party. Now, what's the biggest precedent for this choice? The biggest precedent for this choice, you have to go all the way back to 1980. Then you have to go to the United States of America. And you have to remember the Congress uh, of the Republican Party, the, the GOP Congress in 1979 uh, for the 1980 election. It elected the outsider, Ronald Reagan. He was the outsider, and he defeated the CIA director, George W. Bush. Now, George W. Bush was the presumptive winner of the, of the Republican Congress. As soon as George Bush said, I wanted to be a Republican leader, he was a presumptive person. Reagan began his campaign in California here and there, and then almost like a Kennedy Japan, you know, that he was going through like that. They would say, oh, Reagan, are you sure? Oh, but he's a comedian. Oh, he's a film star. Is he sure? Is he sure? Is he sure? Bam, Reagan won it. He won the Republican nomination. George Bush came second. There was fights. There, you know, like when something was shaking the building, this historical something. Yeah, there, there was fight in the Republican headquarters. The building was like shaking. George Bush has been beaten by Ronald Reagan. The director of the CIA lost the, the primaries. What? What's going to happen? Big deal. So Reagan is called. Say, Chief, you, the politics, you just came. You are not a politician. You just came. You won the thing. Listen, take George Bush as your running mate. Okay? And reluctantly, Reagan agrees. Okay. And that the pair win three terms. They win 1980, win 1984, win 1988, and they lost 1992. Why did they lose 1992? It is rumored that the people who supported Ronald Reagan did not want George Bush to have two terms the same way Reagan had two terms. So they brought in their friend, a rich man called Ross Perot, who ran as independent candidate to take away votes from George Bush when he was looking for a second term so that a young man from Arkansas named Bill Clinton will rise up to the presidency. That's the rumor. But the Reagan people and the George Bush people, they never saw eye to eye even after working in government for two terms. And the Reagan people came back to undermine George Bush by presenting Ross Perot. I don't know. This is the rumor. You find it in some of the books. Uh, some people deny it. When you go to Congress, it's a story that is hanging around the American Congress as well. Uh, so this is what they're asking Baumia to do. You win, you take Alan. No issues. You go through. And then the others are saying that, wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Dr. Baumia's choice must be based on what is happening. Current situation. Ghana is a young population. All the young people are deciding on the issues in the news. So Dr. Baumia cannot have a classic politician choice. I, I am Dr. Baumia, then I take Alan Chiamatini. No, 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 no. It must be a revolutionary choice. And it must flow with the times. It must flow with what people are saying. It must flow with where the Choboy is going. And who is carrying the Choboy if he doesn't win it? The Choboy they believe is carried by Kennedy Japan. So Alaji Baumia, grab Kennedy Japan for your running mate. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? This is another matter. This is what is now holding the meetings in MPP. This is what people are listening. But they say, mm, looks like something interesting. Hey, are you sure? Mm. I actually put the question to Kennedy when we were having conversations after the interview. I won't tell you what he said, but I put the question to him. So this is the ticket that they are talking about. al Hadi Baumia, grab Kennedy Japan. When you do that, you have put out a ticket that is responding to current trends. Kennedy Japan is carrying the narrative. He carries the current trends. He's found of Afro Chela. He's this, the young people die. And in the campaign, can you imagine these two men running a campaign against John Mahama and Jena Nopokwajiman? Whoa, you have to get ready for it. 
you have to get ready for that campaign. When John Mahama gets on the, you know, John Mahama is a great campaigner. He gets on the campaign trail and he's doing his Okada and talking to Okada people and carrying them along and say, look at Dr. Baumia, look at Dr. Baumia, he's hitting our team and say, where is the incompetent one? Imagine Kennedy Japan comes and says, what did John Mahama say yesterday? And he's central, is central. That's the issue. The point they make against this ticket for Dr. Baumia, though, is that Ken is an Ashanti person, but he's in Asante Central Region, Central Region MP. What will Ashanti, how will Ashanti's response be to this ticket? So this is another ticket that people are considering. Note it down. Let's move on. Okay. This is the most talked about of the uh, Baumia Paris. And it's been talked about for a long time. It's probably the leading conversation, but I don't know whether it is beginning to collapse at this stage or whether it is working. Now, what is the strength of this ticket? Strength of the ticket is that Napo is a Ashanti. I mean, Ashanti royal, I have to say. And, and therefore, he is from the, the real belly of the elephant. If you grab him out of there, you get all of Ashanti's support. That is the analysis being made. Napo is also a great campaigner. And he also has a great understanding of the intricacies of elections. After all, he's been election director for the party for a long time. So in terms of polling station analysis, who are we selecting here? He, he understands that kind of thing. What he understands the most is the voting day operation. And people are saying that, but Napo doesn't have to be on the ticket to be able to present his skills for voting the operation. He's been doing it for the party all the time. So why must he be on the ticket to do that? Why can't we have another person on the ticket? Well, so this is the oldest conversation of the Baumia agenda, but people think that there should be other options. What's the next option we are looking at? Napo's former deputy. And it's creating a lot of problems between the Duchum people and the Napo people. This is Dr. Seya Duchum. Now people are telling Dr. Baumia that, look, after two terms of this Akufuado government, you, there's still the strongest point that you have is education. Akufuado's government, if you are inheriting Akufuado's government, you are campaigning on the record of Akufuado's government. Education is still the strongest. It's, it may not be the quality, but the access. Access to infant spin, access to Wesley Girls, access to Achimota School, access to Presec, and getting our children out and getting bigger scholarships in this era Akufuado takes that credit 1,000%. He doesn't share that with John Kufour. He doesn't share that with John Mahama. He doesn't share that with Professor Mills. Free SHS is Nanado Danko Akufuado's policy full stop. So if you are running on Akufuado's legacy, you can't ignore education. You have to put it at the forefront. And who is the education guy? Say I will do too. Incidentally, he's Christian. Incidentally, he's from Ashanti. So... They're telling Dr. Baumia that perhaps you pick this counter argument. Educhum and Baumia is normal. Normal tickets. Bring something revolutionary. You want to break the eight, it can't be normal. You have to be revolutionary. Dr. Baumia himself is revolutionary. This is the first time if he gets selected, the MPP is selecting a Nordner to lead there. That's revolutionary. That's new. That's breaking something. So if you want to break the eight, start by breaking other things. And if you bring a ticket, that doesn't, that's not revolutionary. But let's see how, there's still a lot of time. Something may happen in education that will make Dr. Duchum now become the revolutionary ticket. Something may happen in energy that will make Napo now become the revolutionary ticket. Something may happen in the campaign that will make Kennedy Napo remain the revolutionary ticket. So let's see how it goes as we turn it around. Who is next? Okay, this is the other ticket. People, John Mahama said, that the Ghanaian population is essentially youthful. And therefore, you have to have a very youthful ticket. Mind you, John Mahama's running mate, uh, the presumptuous, presumptuous running mate, Jena Nopokwa Jaman, will be 72 or 73 at the time of the elections. It's not 80 though, but 72 or 73. President Mahama himself will be 67 or 68 at the time of the elections. Uh, so this 80 thing, it might affect him more, but let's, let's keep our eye on the focus. So young person, energetic, shows that, as a, he shows the example of how young people have been given opportunity and they have made it happen. They have risen into their job. He has a lot of respect among diplomatic community, among young people, and where does he come from? He comes from BA, he's a lawyer, and so, Dr. Baumia, consider Godfrey Dami for your running mate. Okay? That's another ticket. And these tickets are choices from the cabinet. That's how we themed it. These are choices from the cabinet. I'll come to the religious choice. I'll come to the business choice. And I'll come to the public policy choice before we wrap up on Dr. Baumia. Let's go. Kojo Ponkruma is here. Now, uh, Kojo Ponkruma is also being talked about as a good running mate for Dr. Baumia. Why? 
Because it says he brings decency into political communication. And you're going to have the NDC, especially with the kind of radical uh, 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 leaders they've selected, there's going to be a lot of vitriol in the, in the campaign. For the MPP to secure the, the good sense of the Ghanaian people, the, uh, the, um, the descending, large descending, quiet majority of Ghanaian people, you need a campaigner that is very decent in his language, that has not respond to the vitriol of the NDC, and that's Kujo Ponkroma. Young, he's from Eastern Region, a broadcaster, successful minister of information, Dr. Baumia, they say, take up Ponkroma along. <laughs> okay, let's see what the next one is. Now, central region is a question, isn't it? Central region is a big issue. And Dr. Baumia is being told about this ticket that look, we also need to pluck into the central region and make sure we have dealt with it. And we, we, if we roll out the whole central region, round our, uh, wrap it around our shoulder, we have won this election because you're going to pick Ashanti, you're going to pick Eastin. With you, Dr. Baumia, we'll pick the three northern regions. We'll do very well in northern region. We can even win Kintampo, etc., etc., because there are a lot of Manprugus uh, in Kintampo and there are Dr. Baumia's people. And then the large Islamic community around the country, that's all going to vote for Dr. Baumia. Let's get central region as well. Who should be the person for central region? Koko Furia Siyama, the man from Dinshira. He is the one, Minister for Transport. They said, Dr. Baumia, please pick the Minister for Transport and let's get on with it. After all, the Cape Coast Airport is going to be done. And when it is done, you and him will come there and announce the ticket. So you can win all of central region. That's the advice going to Dr. Baumia. Next is Deputy Chief of Staff, Carlos von Brazi. Now, when we're doing this, this, this discussion, uh, my people said, that, oh, but why are you adding Brazi? But, but does, is, is Brazi see a politician like that? I said, hey, you don't know that he's a politician like that. He is. Okay, so why, where is the uh, choice coming from? The Jubilee House choice, okay. You're going to have a campaign that's going to be run on national security data and all of that. From Brazil is one of those who has, who's a repository of a lot of the data about Ghana's politics, the politics towards election and all of that, his loyalty to the Akufado government. He's been working in the national security circles for a long time. So we present him as a, you know, the typical American type of vice president. Quiet, but very, very effective. Little to say, but very effective. So you, Dr. Baumia, run all the campaign. Let Von Brazil be at the back and deal with the issues. Okay, we'll see what next. Now, the gender tickets. So they're asking Dr. Baumia, but what about gender? What, what don't you do, gender? And they said, but if it's gender, who are we thinking about? I said, oh, but if it's gender, you don't have to go far. Pick them. You have been doing digitalization. And you have been successful with digitalization. Minister Esla is digitalization. She has political prowess. And yes, Esla does have political prowess. A lot of it. And so, please, pick her as your running mate. Run with it. And you're going to campaign against John Mahama. You know that these Asiedun Ketia and Sami Jinfi are going to come at you. Esla will deal with them. Boot for boots. Program for program, free SHS for free SHS, doom so for doom so, Esla will deal with it. And you want to have a woman on the campaign platform that can really charge and electrify the people. So, Dr. Baumia, Esla Usu, it's your choice. All right, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, now, the religious choice. So, people are telling Dr. Baumia that Muslim, you're a Muslim dog. Some Christian fundamentalists are not going to even listen. They will not even check that, oh, what kind of Muslim is he? Muslim means they can't vote for you. They will either stay home or they will vote for another person. Unless you have a bold religion ticket, a bold ticket that's esteemed on religion. So then they ask them, so if it's esteemed on religion, who should we take? They say, ah, by President Akufado's guy. Who is President Akufado's guy? Oh, the former Pentecost guy. What is his name? That's what they always do. Oh, his name, the Pentecost Akufado's guy. Opoko Nina. That's him. Now, so Opoko Onyina has been very, very, very active with the cathedral. God bless him. God bless his life for being very active on the cathedral matters. Now, they're asking Dr. Baumiada to shut up the religious critics. Just take Opoko Onyina and we are done. It's Akufado's friend. Pa, he will do it. He will do that. If you go and tell him, he will do it. He's a, let Akufado tell him. He's Akufado's man. Pa, pa, pa. They are very close. Tell Opoko Onyina to be your running mate. We finish and we, nobody's going to ask us any religious question. And they tell Dr. Baumia that you don't need to go far to look for an example. Look at Muhammadu Buhari and Osibanjo. Osibanjo is Reverend Osib, Pastor Osibanjo from Redeem. When Buhari's ticket was placed, Obasanjo told them that, look, this is your ticket. You need to have a look at it. You, this Muslim thing, that you're going to get Yoruba Southern Christians to say they will not go vote for you. You might not win. And you know, good luck. Jonathan is strong in the South. What do we do? So go for a pastor and put the matter beyond doubt. 
Full pastor. Osibanjo came in. Full pastor Pukunina. Alhaji, the ball is in your court. What's the next ticket? Okay, this is the business ticket. So other people are saying that, look, look, right now in Ghana here, right now, the people who are most affected by the whole MPP second term situation is the business community. They are angry with you. They don't like your government. They say that domestic bonds have been taken. They say, this, they say their port uh, uh, exemption has been canceled. Everything is bizarre. And today we are announcing increase in taxes at the airport for domestic tickets. Businessmen are not happy. Businessmen control a lot in this country. Businessmen can help you to win the election. So, Alhaji Muhammad Dubaumia, please, 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 as they say, please. Go for a businessman. Who is it going to be? Ernest Oforisapon. Take Ernest Oforisapon as your running mate. Let the business people feel that they are part of your ticket. Ernest Oforisapon is Ashanti, by the way. He's a businessman. He belongs to the East Legon Club. He's one of those rich men who has a lot of white shirts. Okay? They wear the white shirts and on Despise's birthday, they sort of go and jam around. But they control quite a lot. Okay? So they are telling Dr. Baumia that go for Ernest Oforisapon. Nah, son. Nah, son, nah, son. That's it. They control the bloggers. They control the musicians. All the musicians who come to your campaign, they won't go to John Mahama because all they need is a call from Despite and for upon that, hey, Dr. Baumia is in Kintampo, Shatawale, Stoneboy, Kofi Kinata, uh, name them, uh, Abriwanana, uh, Sydney. Yeah, I'm old. Sorry, forgive me. So let, let me go back. Uh, Reggie Rockstone. Yeah, Maka Maka, that's Reggie Rockstone. And then you have a uh, VIP... Uh, let me go. Amachi Didi and Oboba J. Adolfo, CST Amankwa. You don't know those names. You're asking me who is CST Amankwa. Don't worry. When Despise used to be at Okanshi and he, he used to promote music, CST Amankwa was there. So all of those, these people are going to come and campaign for you. Then you're going to win. If you have all the musicians, you're going to win. Who can make that happen? The business community. Who is their candidate? Ernesto Forrest Apon. Take him. But then it's a voice upon you see an MPP get, oh, it's Akufado's friend. Oh, we've forgotten Akufado's friend, pa. You remember 2015 before Akufado used to come and visit this man, pa. So he's fine, he's okay, no problem. Two so for his upon, he's fine. And despite we'll back him of his upon, despite they don't they don't separate. Anywhere of his upon is despite is despite will bring UTV, uh, Hello FM, everything. Dr. Baumi, I just make that decision and we go to 2024, we win. Okay? Next one is the public policy choice again, a Kufu Dampai. It's being told that, why don't you pick a Kufu Dampai as your running mate so that you can end all this confusion? We said a lot about Dampai already. He's on Mohammed's uh, card. He's on Dr. Baumia's card as well. Uh, is that the end of the Dr. Baumia ticket? Okay, I see that it's eight minutes to the top of there. I might have to do the Alan Chermati and Kennedy Japan one on a Thursday. I, I'd like you to wait for it, isn't it? <laughs>